How are we doing folks? Well, to say that I'm a little bit excited today um, would be a bit of an understatement um, because the last kind of major piece to the puzzle for this uh, TDI swap in the camper van is uh, it's just arrived. So, um, it is of course the all-important ECU. So, uh, yeah, um, those of you who have been following my uh, videos uh, may notice that this is actually a different ECU than what I sent. The reason being is because of the fact that what I sent was an MSA-12 ECU and apparently they are a nightmare to uh, reprogram. This is an MSA-15 so it's actually a later version and um, it's, uh, it's off an AFN engine but um, it's been reprogrammed for my uh, AHU engine. Uh, it's still got a 68 pin uh, layout and I'm hoping it's the same kind of form factor in so far as the bolt holes will all line up with what I've actually put into the van. Anyway, small details. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to hook this up and make sure it works and we need to stick the battery in the van as well too. So let's uh, let's get set up and start doing that. Okay, so I'm just going to plug in the ECU here now anyway. Um, so a uh, big 68 pin plug. So I'll actually pop the ECU into where it goes. Kind of the, wire, the wiring is all set up that way. Pull in there and pull this all the way up, and then line up your notches. You don't make it all that easy, to be honest with you. Okay, there we go. There we go. So now as you push that down, it just pulls the uh, pulls all the pins in. That's, that's in now, right. Okay, so let's get the battery installed. So Okay, so I have the ignition switch turned on and I have the positive lead on the battery um, and what I've left it, the way I've left it is basically uh, just to put the, neg the uh, negative on and the reason being is basically I want to hear back here to make sure that everything is kind of um, moving into place and solenoids are clicking and everything sounds right, okay, so <laughs> That was some buzz Okay, um, so uh, I suppose the next thing to do is to, well, make sure that that's on. It is, it's grand. Okay guys, you're, you're keeping an eye at the back here for me and I'm, uh, I'm going to be up the front uh, cranking it over to see if it starts. Everything is on and powered up and everything like that, so fingers crossed folks. Okay, we need to do a bit of investigation, see why it's not cranking now. Or while well, it is cranking, we're not starting. Let's just uh, turn it back on again. I did actually hook up an engine management light, and um, if you look over here, the OBD port is here. Uh, on the firewall and this little LED here is actually the engine management light and it's not on so um, personally I, <laughs> I actually think it's just not working not that it's not, not actually uh, that there's no faults if there was no faults I'd be uh, very surprised um, anyway let's just uh, let's just check everything over and make sure maybe that bloody uh, round connector which I did say was going to be the bane of my life has been disturbed so uh, we need to have a look at that there first of all that's down in there in that mess. Of course, it's, uh, it's of course it's in a difficult to access place. So um, yeah. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll I'll do uh, I'll do my investigations two-handed, and I'll bring you back and tell you what I found. Okay, the um, ECU connector wasn't fully home actually, so it is now. And um, actually, one of the pieces that uh, slides along was actually broken in the connector I have. So um, yeah, it, that that's what was stopping it from sliding. It's actually uh, this piece here was actually uh, it broke off in the connector. 
as you push down the, the little tab that's supposed to pull the connector in and it was stopping it from going in all the way. Anyway, if we have a listen now, there's much more life happening there in that uh, fuel pump. So uh, let's try it again and see if we get any life now. I think I've never done before is rabbit. Bearing in mind we've no coolant in it, that's the next thing we need to sort out. Not sound half bad. There's a bit of a lumpiness to it there. We need to check that out. I know there's going to be teething problems with this, so we just need to work through them. But uh, anyway, let's get some coolant into it next, and I'll take it for a drive and see how it runs. There's also a little bit of ECU rewiring I need to do. I need to wire in a, a relay to. Um, ground out a signal on the ECU when you press the brake pedal. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all of that information to be honest with you, I'll just show you the end results. Okay, um, so let's start it again now anyway and see how... Uh, right. Sounds happy out, doesn't it? Okay, so I've got the expansion bottle full there now, right? And all the water is pouring out of a little hole down there. I'll see if you can see it there. Where's it gone? There you go, look. So I don't know what it's supposed to be in there. Um, I have a funny feeling a self-tapping screw will be in there, but uh, at the moment, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> we can't go very much further with it, with it like that. Next screw to the rescue. That'll work. That'll work perfectly. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's a galvanised screw anyway, so I mean, it'll be it'll be all right. It's a bit of a bodge, but in the absence of anything else, what else are we meant to do? Right, let's get the rest of that cooling system filled up now. Okay, so a few of you are probably going to be wondering at this point what I actually uh, did off camera because there is obviously there has obviously been a few jobs done on it. Um, I put the exhaust on, and that was an absolute nightmare. The reason it was an absolute nightmare was because I didn't take the studs out of the turbo while I had the turbo on the bench. I ended up having to do it on my back under the van and that was a nightmare. So that's been done. Um, engine mount on the left hand side has been replaced along with a new bolt put in. The timing belt cover has been reinstalled. The wiring has been tidied up a bit more. 
Um, I did the coolant bleeding in a different video just to do an instruction video on that. The um, uh, auxiliary water pump is actually wired in and working and the way that works is I have a relay up the front end which um, clicks on and grounds the uh, signal wire from that um, when the coolant fan turns on, um, the radiator fan I mean, um, and uh, yeah so, that, so that's that and the next thing I need to do is I need to put a um, another relay in and I'm going to put it over there and I have to tidy up all that wiring over there as well too. Um, the other relay what it will do is it will basically give a, a grounded signal to either um, to one of two pins on the uh, ECU when you press the brake pedal and um, so windings of brake pedal go to um, winding uh, uh, sorry the, the windings of the relay go to the brake pedal or the brake Jesus the brake light and um, that basically pulls in the contact which either go, brings one pin to ground or the other one so it's a changeover relay basically um, and uh, yeah that's basically that so um, we'll, uh, we'll get that done now as well okay folks it's time to take her for a drive so uh, the moment is upon us um, I don't expect it's actually going to drive well for the first time around. I'd say there's probably going to be a teething problem or two. I'd say it'll probably smoke a bit because of the fact that there's a... It's been a while since this engine has actually been driven. I mean, it, it hasn't been revved in ages. I started it, but it hasn't, uh, hasn't been revved up at all, except for uh, just now, like, I mean, when I started it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's starting on the button now anyway, so let's, uh, let's have a listen. Should be a... Uh, pretty good actually to be honest so uh, yeah let's get into the driver's seat and give it a go okay I can't say I'm not a little bit apprehensive actually taking this for a drive now so <laughs> I suppose it's just a case of seeing how she goes this is the first time this van has moved in a long time the brakes are working all right I did the, uh, I, I overhauled the back brakes as well too. It's in a separate video, so for those of you who haven't seen it. Let's get around the corner. We'll open the taps. It sounds nice anyway. Noises coming from the back there that I'm not overly happy about. Some rattles and stuff like that. I don't think the throttle linkage is pulling all the way open, so that's something we're going to have to look at. Because, you know, there's been a few times there I put my foot flat to the floor and it does feel like the engine has more to give, but it's not giving it because of the fact that it's not opening all the way. So, there's flat to the floor now. I have to say the gear shift is beautiful though. Oh, that is just... Yeah, that's the that's the um, the cherry on the cake for me now is that that gear shift. What we do is we get it back home. We'll have a look and see where all the rattles are coming from. This is more rattles than mother care in it at the moment. 
So, uh, and it, the idle's a bit lumpy as well too. To be honest, it sounds like shit. to want to get it back quickly because it does not sound like a tappy. Now I'm stuck at a red light. It's a very lumpy idle. It's always the way you get stuck at a red light when you really don't need to be. But um, yeah, you see, I knew this was going to be the case. I did say that in the, uh, the, before I even sat into the driver's seat to take it for a spin, that it wasn't going to drive well. The transmission is 100%, and um, it's just as I said, the engine doesn't sound happy. It's uh, there's, there's a lumpiness there to it, which um, I'm getting the impression there might be a, um, a sensor that's uh, out of uh, out of kilter or something like that. You know, what I mean. So what we'll do is we'll get back and we we'll plug in the. Uh, diagnostic tool I have and we'll see what, uh, see what it's saying if anything because if you remember back to when the engine was sitting on the ground uh, I couldn't get that to work just reversing back onto the driveway here now Yeah, I'm going to call that a successful failure at this point in time, but um, let's do a bit of investigating and see what's going on. There is, uh, there's obviously uh, something, uh, something awry. Uh, I mean, positives so far, it's moving. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with the drivetrain, so far as I can tell. The uh, gearbox is 100% so far. Uh, I, I got through to third gear and that was it. Um, and uh, it's... Uh, yeah, I mean it's running, like and it's moving. So we're nearly there. So let's uh, let's go and have a look and see what's going on. Okay, I'm going back to the situation with the auxiliary belt. It seems to be that that's causing the uh, problem. I think there's something up with the tensioner. Either it's stuck or it's there's an adjustment that needs to be made in it. But uh, you guys stay here and have a look and see what I mean. I'm going to just uh, leave it recording for a second to start. Okay, so I've taken the belt off and I'm going to start it now and see how it runs with the belt off and see what uh, see what's going on there. So let's uh, let's have a quick look and see. I'm going to leave you there again. Okay, so it's sounding a lot healthier, but still not 100%. There's still a lumpiness there too. But certainly part of the problem is that uh, attention. So let's get rid of the lumpiness first of all and look at the tension. I think I might have a dodgy injector actually. There's a... Uh, the lumpiness is causing the belt to jerk I think is what's actually happening. Like if you rev it up a bit, that all evens out. But, It's misfiring, but the thing is, there's no false code showing up in the ECU. So, uh, I think I need to pull the injectors and get them sent off for repair. Should have done that ages ago. But anyway, look. At okay, so I spoke to the guy there who did the um, ECU for me, and he reckons the pump timing is out a bit, which would make sense because there's actually a bit of white smoke off the engine as well too. So maybe what I need to do is just tweak that a little bit. Um, it becomes difficult to do the pump timing of this engine now because of the fact that I've now got no timing mark on the uh, bell housing to go by to get top dead center. So um, 
really I suppose all I can do is kind of go slightly one way or another on the pump. A little goes a long way with it though, I mean half a degree, a half a degree can actually make a big difference in the diesel engine so um, so it's a, it's not an easy task to, to do really, I mean insofar as what we do is crack open, there's uh, three uh, three bolts, there's one here and then there's two that are accessible through the pulley on the other side and then there's another one down there and then once you've got it loose then you can you can turn the body of the uh, pump in the same way as you would if you were setting ignition timing on a petrol engine turn the distributor, you are turning the pump here, I mean this is called a distributor type pump for a reason um, so uh, we are going to try that and see how we fare out uh, the other thing as well too is I'm going to back off the, uh, the nut on this um, throttle position sensor and just pull that out a little bit more and see if I can get a, a bigger range of movement on it as well too. Hopefully that's one of the lads going back to me there now and uh, I'm asking two different guys two different sets of questions so um, yeah we'll find out anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this not to worry. Okay so it's a couple of hours later and um, I've been kind of tinkering trying to figure out what's going on with the uh, engine. Um, I put a throttle return spring on and uh, adjusted that out, so now we have full range of throttle movement. But I think there is something seriously wrong with this engine. I think I may have been sold a dud, and I am not a happy man at all. I'm going to start it now. Okay, so it's back idling again now. I revved it hard, and it died on its arse. It started badly misfiring. Oh. Restarted is encouraging. Maybe there is something uh, electronic going on, but I'm still thinking it could be an injector. It sounds like a bag of hammers, though. It sounds rough as hell. I'm not a happy man. Anyway, I've ordered the BCDS uh, probe, so we'll see if there's something electronic going on. But I have a funny feeling it's something more sinister. Okay, so this time I revved the stones off and it didn't actually die on its arse. I wonder if it's in a fuel in the issue. Smoke is clearing. Get into it and drive it and see how it's pulling. Okay, we've established there's definitely something wrong in the uh, in the engine department. So let's just take it for a spin. I want to see if it's actually pulling all right. See, once you get it up off idle, it settles down quite nicely. Just see now. I mean, if it's pulling all right. Okay, there's a straight section here. Oh yes, it's pulling all right. It's just a shame the speed humps. Oh, a lot of the lads go. Okay, yeah, so it's pulling. So I don't want to go out of the estate, you know. I mean, we're supposed to be uh, limiting our uh, exposure to the road, let's just say. Turn here. Um, okay. You know, I, I, I'm still, I'm still thinking it's an injector. You know, it's, it's feeling that way to me. I don't think it's electronic. Like, at 140,000 miles. An engine is probably due, uh, its injector is getting overhauled anyway at this stage, so... 
Okay, that's... It's not smoky or anything. feels like taking it out on a main road and giving it a good blast might just clear it out like maybe the reason it died in its arse is because another injector got clogged because it started sounding like it was a well let's just say my Lister engine sounded better <laughs> so that's definitely not good I killed it fairly quickly but we're not getting oil pressure warnings it's not overheating it's actually not even on temperature yet to be honest and I haven't been able to get it on temperature so anyway Okay, so it's just a case now of getting the VCDS thing, plugging that in, and then seeing how uh, seeing how we go from there. And if we need to get the injectors done, like if there's nothing showing up on that, it's out of. Oh, there's an handbrake. <laughs> uh, if there's nothing showing up with the VCDS and all the electronics are checking out all right, then the next step is to pull the injectors and have a look there and see what's going on. Um, I might even just pull them out and throw them in the ultrasonic bath. I have a little ultrasonic bath in the garage actually myself. It doesn't it doesn't heat up, but um, it might do the trick. I don't know. Um, but there again, if I if I go to all the bother of taking them out, maybe I just want to get them actually properly overhauled at that stage. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean like I'm happy it's pulling all right. I'm happy it's uh, you know. When you accelerate, it's not the, the roughness is going out of it, but you can hear it in the background. It sounds desperate. <laughs> um, you know, you you can hear how it's uh, how it's accelerating. You know, it doesn't feel like it's resisting me, or it's kind of saying, "Ah, here, Ross, you know, let off the accelerator, pal." Um, you know, it the engine actually the it's noisy. It sounds like it probably is injectors needing overhauling. Maybe, uh, as I said, a good blast. You know, throw a bottle of Dipitane into the tank. That's great stuff, by the way. If you haven't used it, it's it, it's marvelous for cleaning out injectors. Uh, throw that into us. Give it a good run. I might take it into work on Monday if I'm feeling brave or stupid or both. <laughs> um, I'm uh, uh, yeah. So. We can um, we can kind of go from there and see how we uh, see how it all pans out, but um, yeah, look for the moment. I think, as I said, it's it starting easily. So if you listen to it now. And when it when it does start, it's ticking over all right. There's a there's a roughness to it there. I don't like. It's like a. I don't know what it is. It's it's kind of does you know it doesn't sound quiet. Like I mean, my J's, the, the AAZ engine was probably quieter. I would expect that the AHU engine will be quieter. Um, but uh, yeah, um, bit of a quandary now. Uh, so um, if any of you have any insights, I mean, there's probably people here watching these videos who are like Ross, you gotta check this, you gotta check that. Put them in the comments, please, because you know I'm not a car mechanic i'm an aircraft mechanic you know if it was a turbine engine in the back of this i'd be absolutely fine with it and i'd fix it by now i'd have had it fixed and working by now but uh diesel engines are a little bit different and um, sometimes they're actually a little bit more complicated so uh yeah the turbine engines tend to be the case when you put them together they work but uh, well not always but most of the time <laughs> anyway we won't get too much into that look at uh yeah we'll um we'll pick this up in a future video anyway so um uh yeah yeah, uh, I think we'll leave it here uh, for today and um, once the VCDS cable arrives, um, we'll get that done. I'll uh, go through it, plug it in the laptop and see how we fare out and um, hopefully uh, by the end of next week I'll be able to uh, take this uh, van on a road test and see how we get on. So that's something to look forward to. Anyway, look, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.